Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel or ever watched a Tacky Tuesday, I definitely encourage you to do so. It's where we go over short EMS cardiology lessons and usually we do it in four to five minutes. Today we're going to be talking all about non-STEMIs. So first, let's talk about what an NSTEMI actually is. An NSTEMI, also known as a non-STEMI or a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, is a type of heart attack that does not present with STEMI characteristics on an EKG. Unlike a typical STEMI, an NSTEMI does not show ST elevation, and it may only indicate a partial blockage of a coronary artery. It is usually discovered in the hospital after labs and blood work are done. So usually when I go over the characteristics of a certain type of heart attack, I'll include where to look for elevation and reciprocal depression, but non-STEMIs are different. So I'm just going to explain to you some of the characteristics you may see. Although a patient may present with the same symptoms as a STEMI, an NSTEMI manifests differently on an EKG, if they manifest at all. NSTEMIs present with more ischemic EKG changes like T-wave inversion or ST depression, and usually they're going to lack the reciprocal changes. These EKG abnormalities may go completely unnoticed and typically do in the pre-hospital setting. There may be a suspicion of an NSTEMI. You may see T-wave inversion and depression accompanied with chest pain, but there's no actual confirmation in the field. The way that they confirm it in the hospital, obviously they're going to note their symptoms, they're going to obtain an EKG, and there may be abnormalities on that, and then they're going to do lab work and check the troponin levels. This is the main reason that you can't tell a patient that they're not experiencing a heart attack. Even if you don't see ST elevation, we we, unfortunately out in the field cannot see everything. So it's important to say to a chest pain patient that even though you may not see any obvious abnormalities on the 12 lead, unfortunately we can't see everything and you recommend going to the hospital. The causes and risk factors for a non-STEMI are heart disease or heart failure, previous stroke, smoking. Smoking is the worst guys. As we know out in the EMS field, it can cause blood clots, it can cause heart disease, heart attack, stroke, and let's not even get into the COPD stuff. Hyper hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and diabetes. All of that is a cause and risk factor for a non-STEMI obesity, advanced age, and sedentary lifestyle. Your signs and symptoms of an NSTEMI or a non-STEMI are going to be the same as a heart attack. Chest pain, jaw, back, abdominal, arm pain, shortness of breath, nausea or vomiting, um, dizziness, syncope, fatigue, diaphoresis, weakness, and palpitations. That's why it's so important to treat our chest pain patients with chest pain protocol. Let's Let's take a quick look at some of the changes that you may see, if any, on an NSTEMI EKG. All right, just taking a quick glance at this, we're seeing obvious T-wave inversion. I'm seeing it in V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. I'm also seeing it in lead one and AVL. So we are seeing a lot of T-wave inversion. In other EKGs that I've seen, you may see very slight T-wave inversion and very slight ST depression. That's why it's so hard to identify. All right, going into the possible EMS treatments. So typically our patients that are experiencing an NSTEMI may call us because they're having chest pain or nausea, vomiting, things like that. If they are experiencing chest pain, then we want to follow our chest pain protocol. You want to get a 12 lead vitals, even if we don't know what's going on from the 12 lead, which chances are we may not. We want to treat it as though it is cardiac chest pain, as long as there wasn't trauma or some other underlying cause. You want to gain IV access, obtain a blood draw, administer oxygen if necessary, aspirin, nitroglycerin, and you can consider a narcotic analgesic like morphine or fentanyl. And the next is you just want to treat your patient's complaint or complaint. Is your patient feeling nauseous? Are they vomiting? Consider an anti-emetic. The main thing is just talking to your patient and finding out how they're feeling. And you want to report and transmit any findings to the hospital, even if you don't think they're serious. Make sure to explain to them in your radio report and also transmit your EKG if you're able. And with these patients, you want to get an OPQRST history. If you don't already know what that is, I'll go ahead and link the video up in the right-hand corner right now. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.